Welcome back to West Texas View. Before the break, we were talking with Karen Wittemeyer about how she found her publisher and, and how she got enmeshed within the, the publishing community. But also we were talking about uh, agents. And so <clears throat> you had already made an appointment just kind of out of the blind for... Uh, there was an agent that I had kind of had my eye on. Um, I had done research online and knew that she was a new agent and so she was looking for clients. Um, she also was specializing in the same area that she was specializing in the Christian market, which was my uh, area. And so I had already submitted something to her. She had it in her hold file. It wasn't an open rejection, but it wasn't a, I want to see more right now. She was kind of holding it in her maybe file. Um, so after I went to this conference, I had a chance to talk with the editors first. And since they showed interest, when I went to talk with her, she showed more interest also. Um, but you know, publishing is difficult because there's kind of a catch-22 where the publishers um, won't take unsolicited manuscripts anymore because they just get so inundated they can't you know, I don't have the manpower uh -huh. to go through uh -huh. all those unsolicited manuscripts. So the big publishers will say, we won't accept anything unless it comes from an agent. Uh -huh. So you say, okay, well, I need to get an agent. So then you start looking at agents, and all the reputable agents say, well, we're not going to take you unless you're published. So you have this, <laughs> you, well, how do you get around that, yeah. you know? And so that's one of the reasons why these professional organizations are so important, because when you go to these conferences, you have a chance to meet with editors and agents face-to-face -face during these appointment times, and that's just, it's priceless. You can't uh -huh. beat that because that's the only way to get around that catch-22. So it's very important. And, and tell the story about how kind of serendipitously you met one of the publishers, uh, I mean one of the editors of the Bethany House uh, printing company, which was the company you were wanting to if you could have the best of all worlds, but never believed that you would be able to uh, have that. So at this conference, tell that story. Well, it was it was really a, a fun thing. Um, I had always dreamed of being a Bethany House author. They were my favorite publishing house. I liked all the books that they put out. It was the books that I loved to read. And since I wanted to write what I liked to read, I wanted to write for them. That was my dream. But I was I was trying to not get ahead of myself. I thought, well, I'll start with some other publishing companies that are usually more open to new authors. So I didn't even make appointments to talk with anybody from Bethany House. Um, and the year before, I had gone to a conference in 2007 and decided since it was in Dallas I could go and be there early and I decided I'd volunteer and so I was stuffing envelopes and all the pre-conference stuff that goes out to everybody and a lady came in and started working right next to me at the table that I was at and my name is Karen and it turns out her name was Karen and I thought well that's kind of fun you know we have something in common we can kind of chit chat about that I had no idea who she was well, the longer we worked there, I started to pick up cues from the other people that were working in the same room. But the questions that they would ask and the things that they would say, it turns out that she was an editor for Bethany House, my dream publisher. I couldn't believe it. It was wonderful. And um, I was trying to be, you know, good and not pitching my book at her right away. So I just, you know, we just kept working. Not intrusive. Right, <laughs> trying to be humble about it, you know, but still thinking, well, I've got to make the most of this connection, you know. So later at the conference, we um, sat at the same table for lunch because you're allowed to sit at tables with uh -huh. editors to kind of pitch your ideas and so pitched my idea and she was interested and that kind of that book was eventually rejected but it opened a door for me at Bethany House uh -huh. that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Uh, she's the one that said this is this we don't want this book but it's got some real good parts so we right. like your writing style. Well and it turns out that she's now my line editor so she and I work together quite oh, a bit so that's it's fun. Wonderful. And so and then but most of the work at this point is it done through your agent? The agent, um, the most stuff that the agent does for me, she helped me submit the initial proposal for the contract, but the main thing she does for me right now is negotiate new contracts. So oh. she negotiated my current contract. Which and, is for three books. Right, which is for three books. And then when I get this third book done, which I'm in the process of writing now, when that one's finished, we have to start looking, okay, am I going to get contracted again? And so she'll help me with that um, process as well. Now, a lot of times um, when agents uh, work with clients that don't already have a contract, their main job is to find that contract. So they're submitting your work to all the different publishing uh. houses trying to get you in the door. But my situation was a little bit different since I had already had connections with the editors. I already had my foot in the door, uh -huh. and so all she had to do was come in and negotiate the contract uh -huh. for me. And 
And so, so how do you deal with an agent? I mean, what kind of contract do you have with an agent? Well, they get 15% of any money that I make off of the books that they sell for me. So um, right off the top, the advance that I earn, they get 15% of that, and then I get the other 85. Um, royalties, when those start coming in, they'll get 15% and I get 85. So that's how the business part of it works. But uh, as far as the communication and everything, we just she lives in Colorado, I live in Texas. We just email back and forth, and um, we don't talk to each other every day. You know, sometimes it's only when you know a question comes up or mm -hmm. I have a new proposal mm -hmm. that I'm thinking about. Um, so we try to keep in touch, but it may we may go several months without talking. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the questions that I had about uh, the agent relationship is: Do you keep? Does most people keep the same agent for? ever? <laughs> That's kind of how we want it to be. That, that would be the ideal. Now, if you don't get along with your agent or if you don't think they're doing a good job, you know, you can sever the relationship and look for someone mm -hmm. else. But best case scenario, we hope that, you know, you and the agent get along really well and they get along with your publisher really well and it just becomes a, you know, a happy situation where everybody can work together. Well, is your relationship with Karen, the editor, mm -hmm. uh, likely to go on or as you go on, will she, uh, will you get a new editor? She will probably stay with me as long as she's there and, and I'm writing for Bethany House. I think that's how it's, it's going to work. Um, I have another editor, Charlene, who's my main acquisitions editor. She kind of manages the whole project. Um, and those are the two people that I've worked the most closely with for all three of my books. And so what happens is when, when a manuscript, let, let me just walk us through this. And uh, when a, man, a manuscript is, is accepted and we're going to publish it, then they take over designing a book cover, but do they ask you, do they say, do you have any ideas? I mean, this is so, per this is so illustrative of what's inside the book. This one is just They did so wonderful. They do, um, the, the editors that have read the book and worked on it with you will talk to the art department to give them an idea about what kind of image they want to project. We wanted to have a little bit of humor, which is why he's stepping on her skirt. We wanted to show the romance, which is why you have the, the male-female characters together there. We wanted to show the historical side of it. Uh -huh. But they also asked for a lot of details about um, the characters, what kind of clothes they wore, uh -huh. um, what kind of hair they have, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that they get a lot of details from me. Um, and then they draw from that when they go to make the cover. Good. Well, that's, a, that's an interesting part of it. I, I hope you're learning a lot about how to get a book published, and we're not through yet. We'll be back in just a second, and we'll continue this conversation with Karen Wittemeyer. But in the meantime, if you live pretty far away and you're not close to a bookstore and you want this book right away, get on her uh, website and it'll tell you how, how you might could get one closer. We'll see you in just a minute with another uh, segment of our program. Stay tuned. West Texas View will be right back. 